On Monday, we will be remembering 9-11. It will be the 16th anniversary of the terror attacks. Now, there are countless stories of heroism of that day, and one of those heroes has just been made his story into a movie called Man in Red Bandana. That man, Wells Crowther, a volunteer firefighter from Nyack. He was working in the World Trade Center when the planes hit. He saved countless people on that awful day. Unfortunately, he did not make it out alive. But he will be forever remembered for the heroism he did and also for the red bandana that he wore. Matthew Weiss is a writer and director of the film Man in Red Bandana and Alison Crowther, the mother of Wells Crowther, the man in the red bandana himself. You know, many people first uh, heard the story of, of an amazing young man um, with that Tom Rinaldi piece that played on ESPN, but also other people remember first being introduced to this story when the president, uh, then President Obama, spoke about him. Uh, let me play that clip for our audience. They didn't know his name. They didn't know where he came from, but they knew their lives had been saved by the man in the red bandana. And Allison, um, as more people, certainly those that will come see the film, we'll talk more about um, its, its airing and suffering coming up shortly. But for the man, obviously, that you and your family raised um, to the one that uh, people heard the story and many people connected the heroism they saw on that awful day. Talk a little bit about your son, because apparently from a very young age, loyalty, um, fearlessness, caring for others were common traits that he showed. When you heard the full story about what happened in the towers that day, it must have fit the, the, the son that you obviously had raised for more than 20 some odd years. Yes, it did. Uh, really, I, when I first read these references in the New York Times article, uh, I knew right away that it was Wells. It described someone who had fire medic training, Wells was a, a fully trained volunteer firefighter. It was the location he would have expected to be in. Uh, he was attempting to go down to help out at the events at the first tower that was hit. So uh, we knew he'd left his office, and yet we also knew he had been recovered uh, at the uh, ground level with Lieutenant Donald Burns, uh, the incident commander of, of the second tower. So. Um, the, the time, the location fit, and then I saw the reference to the red handkerchief, the red bandana, and I just knew right away it was Wells. I know you've been asked this a million times, but what was it about that bandana that was with him at all times as, as a kid going through school? He played major division or won lacrosse, but he always had that bandana, and obviously he had it that day. Why was that so special to him? Well, it was something his father gave to him when he was a very little boy. We were getting ready for church, and Wells knew his father carried bandanas, so after my husband tucked a white kerchief in his breast pocket, uh, Wells said, Daddy, could I have a bandana, too? And my husband said, of course. So he just happened to grab a red one out of the drawer and put it in Wells' back pocket and said, now, Wells, this bandana, that's for blow. The, the white handkerchief, that's for show. Don't touch that used that red bandana for messy jobs, and he just kept it ever after. I, I think it was a, a bond he had with his father, a, a real connection to his father. And Matthew, this film, uh, which has been very well received uh, at festivals, and it's going to have its uh, world premiere screening uh, tomorrow. Um, we'll talk more about that in night. But what about the story literally got you to quit your profession as an attorney and become a filmmaker, a, a career that you had zero background in, what was so moving about this story that obviously had that kind of a hold on you? You know, when I heard the story, I was just gripped. I just thought it was utterly amazing that a piece of fabric, a red bandana, could change the perspective on their loss for the Crowthers. There are so many people that honor Wells in so many different ways. There are songs written about him, poems uh, written about him. In the film, you see babies all over the country named after him. And this legacy that lives on, this folklore stature that he's assumed, just is unbelievably inspirational, uplifting. And as Jeff says in the film, it shows how some good could come from evil. Talk about the genesis uh, of how uh, the story that a lot of people, as you said, were moved. I remember in the intervening years, people cited that. Um, and I, I will tell you, Alice, I know people from both B.C., from Rockland, et cetera, who did that. They named their kid after your son. 
it had a connection. There was a lot of heroes that day, but for some reason that story about a person who didn't need to do what he did, uh, took it upon himself and did that selflessly, at least 10 people's lives were saved. In fact, I want to share a soundbite from the film here from one person who directly uh, remembers him and his actions that day. He said, I found this deer, follow me, only help the one you can help. There was a story from people that got out, survivors, that somebody helped them. If they didn't know who he was, they couldn't see his face, they had a red bandana over his mouth and his nose. Without him, that particular moment, I would be crushed or buried. And have you been surprised at all, Matthew, even years after? Um, BC has an annual game for him. You go to the high school, obviously, at Nyack High School. You go to the fire station in Upper uh, Nyack. There's remembrances everywhere. We mentioned the legacy he still leaves behind. Were you surprised in putting this film together, the indelible imprint he left on so many? You know, I wasn't surprised because when I first got involved, I knew that there were babies named after him and songs written about him. But... What is surprising is how many people have continued to do so even as the film goes on. And he's, even today, Allison just told me that there's a couple of additional boys that were be, um, born that are named after Wells. And this continues to go on. And in this film, it's very hard. And there's some points where your heart will break. You may shed a tear. But then when you learn what Wells did, his heroics in putting out fires, extricating people that were trapped, uh, even carrying a woman down 17 flights, the South Tower, you can't help but be uplifted and inspired. And then, of course, you hear his legacy thereafter and how he's honored throughout the country in so many diverse ways. And then finally, I won't spoil it, but we reel this uh, amazing secret about Wells that just provides the most incredible ending. So you're going to go on a cathartic journey. And I would say this film has one of the inc most incredible endings of any documentary. I just would like to add that it's, it's not only people that knew of Wells' story uh, because they were from Boston College or from Nyack, but they're total strangers that are naming their children after Wells. And we just recently learned that there is a town out in uh, the Midwest that's going to be naming September 11th Red Bandana Day in their community to honor um, not only those lost, but uh, to honor all first responders. And that was pretty wonderful to hear. I, I can only imagine. And I'm curious, Allison, obviously it's, we're coming up on the 16th anniversary. Um, in the film and the project and going through all of this, um, is this at all cathartic? Does it open up uh, old wounds? Uh, how has it been here and continuing to talk about your son who was taken far too early from us? Well, to us, it's a wonderful thing that he's being remembered by so many people. Uh, Matthew's done a really splendid job with this documentary film, honoring Wells' story, honoring his legacy. Um, it's, yes, it's difficult, of course, because, um, you know, Wells was such a beloved and son and such a wonderful person. So we just try to keep our head in to the th thoughts of all the good that's coming from his story. I, I travel around the country quite a lot speaking at schools, and I see how young people everywhere, from the smallest town in Nebraska, for example, to very sophisticated um, upper middle class communities here in the East, they all just are moved by Wells' story. They're impacted powerfully by his story. And they're all brought to a new level, I think, of understanding um, their importance in this world as being individuals that can, can do something to make good come in some way. And you know, uh, Matthew, we've seen, obviously, very recently with the tragedies down in Texas, uh, heroism, um, and uh, even out of some awful times here, um, sometimes uh, the unbelievable uh, acts of generosity and kindness uh, can remind us about the goodness of people. But um, talk about, uh, again, if you will, again, the fil film was Man in a Red Bandana. He went up so others could come down. Uh, you mentioned that the folks won't just see the story they think they know, but also some twists. But talk a little bit also um, about what you hope when they leave that theater, they're left with more than just the memory of an amazing young man. Sure. Well, viewers are certainly going to go on a cathartic journey because it's going to take them down, they're going to shed a tear, but then they're going to be lifted and uplifted and inspired by Wells. And when they leave, I'm hoping personally that they become better people, that they think less of themselves and more of others. And they don't have to save people to do so. 
giving up your seat in a bus or holding the door open for someone who's trailing you. Simple acts like that can make us all better people. And Wells reminds me every day to be a better person. When I travel to schools and I speak to young people, um, I, we share Wells' story and I say to them, you know, Wells was a, a young person just like you all um, and with very similar desires and wants and needs, uh, not very different from, from most of you. But um, so this is Wells' story, this is what he did on 9-11, but the importance of his story is how it's going to work inside of you. And I try to leave the, the children with that message. Well, uh, for folks in our neck of the woods, the world premiere will be uh, September 6th at the Lafayette Theater on 97 Lafayette Ave in Suffern. Doors are going to be opening at 7 and the film at 7.30. Uh, cannot uh, more strongly uh, urge folks to come check it out if they don't already. I was just going to add that we uh, just signed the New City Fine Arts Cinema and they're going to be showing it for at least one full week in New City. So, and then there's other locations nearby. If you go to bandanafilm.com, you can see the various locations. We're in 20 states, 40 locations. And of course, it's available on VOD, on iTunes and Amazon. So people can download it and watch it at the, in their home as well. And we've linked that site to the bottom of our page so viewers have seen that as well. I wish you both the best of luck and thank you so much for the time. No, thank, thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Coming up next, we'll take a look at some local headlines. So please stay with us.